Hey, I'm Dr. Matt Chalmers. Lots of you guys have asked me as a concussion specialist and as a sports specialist, would I let my kids play football or should anybody let their kids play football? And the answer is yes. Uh, football is a great sport, teaches lots of great life skills. It, it really does help you know, motivate these little kids into being great athletes and great people. However, there are some dangers and we really do need to take those into account. The easiest thing we gotta do is get the DNA tested. You gotta check your brain, you gotta see how your brain can respond to insult. And that's concussions, that's you know, different medical drugs, that's heat stroke, that's anything that's gonna insult the brain. And that's really easy. You take a buccal swab, swab around inside the mouth, test the APOE genes, and it tells us, hey, you're gonna be the type of guy who has anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts, you know, bad, bad stuff from brain injury, or you're gonna be the guy who can get 20 concussions and be fine at the end of the day. It's a, it's a very good test that kind of determines your likelihood to go over here or over there. So get that testing done. It's not that expensive, it's not that hard. We do it all the time. Now, the other thing is you gotta make sure we have the best technology available for protection of the head to begin with. So this is my football helmet from 20 years ago. So hard outer shell, the chin strap, which holds the head, is strapped to the outside, here and down here. So what happens is that whenever the, the helmet takes a hit, it rattles around and the chin, which is strapped directly to the outside, also rattles around, thus rattling the head. So having a chin strap directly snapping to the outside of the shell or only strapping to the outside of the shell is a major downside. The other thing is 20 years ago, we had these nice hard outer shells with these, these dense foam pad inserts. They're nice and hard. Now the idea was that the tighter we get the helmet, the more protective it is, which to a degree is actually right. The problem is, is that there's no real separation. So it goes hard outer shell, dense foam insert, head. And so the amount of impact that's taken away from the head, and thus the skull and thus the brain, isn't very much in a helmet like this. Uh, keeps the face pretty, or as pretty as it can, and it doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for the brain. So we look at something that's brand new. This is a brand new helmet, bought it today. This is what everybody's telling their kids to get. This is the Rydell Youth 360. Again, hard outer shell, chin strap that attaches directly to the outside, here, here, and so we've still got that take a hit, rattles the brain around thing. Now in this one, <clears throat> they've got a little bit of padding that's trying to hold you together. However, it's still dense foam pad on the inside. Now these dense foam pads strap in a little bit differently, but they're still hard outer shell over dense foam pads. So the brains can get rattled around almost the same amount. This is better than this, but not a whole lot. So, that's one of the things we want. I want to make sure that you guys get is that while the Howard Outer Shell right now, we can't do anything about, this is as good as you're going to get, you got to do something else. The guys at Zenith took a completely different route. So while it looks like the chin strap straps to the inside, to the, to the outside, it doesn't really. It's connected to what's called the bonnet system, which isn't connected to the helmet. So instead of using dense foam pads underneath the hard shell, they use shock absorbers that are put into a bonnet system that holds the head. The bonnet system isn't directly touching the outer shell. So when the outer shell takes an impact, it then has to translate into the bonnet system, which is, has all these shock absorbers on it, to further dissipate impact. Now the chin strap that we talked about snugs up the bonnet system against your head. So it's completely individualized per person. And you can move these, you can move these little shock absorbers around a little bit to get it even more personalized. But like I said, these shock absorbers aren't connected to the inside of the helmet, which means that when we take a hit, the translating force is spread out here, hits the shock absorber, spreads them out even further, and then hits into the bonnet system before it hits the head. So this is a much superior helmet if we're trying to take as much impact off the head as possible. Now. It's still going to be critical that you strengthen your neck and upper back, 
because you've got to dissipate the energy or decrease the energy from your head whipping around because the head whipping around is really what creates the concussions. There's only two ways you can get a concussion. One, the skull and the brain make too hard of contact, or two, like an explosive force, like a, like a pressure wave goes through the head and rattles the brain around. Not a whole lot of that going on, uh, not a whole lot of the shockwave thing going on. So we've got to worry about, is the brain and the skull making contact? And the only way for that to happen is that the skull moves very quickly and rattles into the brain. So the slower we can move the head, neck, shoulders, being strong, is going to be your primary. But the secondary, you got to keep things from bouncing around. That's what this helmet does. So if you're looking for a helmet for your kids, for you, for whatever, look at the Zenith. This is the Epic. They're not all clear. Um, so check this one out. Uh, they did just do a, a recall on a couple of them because they used special paint and apparently that fancy special paint cracked a couple of the helmets. But make sure it's not a special paint, but this is the safest helmet that you're going to be able to get for concussions. So check this one out, stay safe, get your DNA tested, and be safe. Thanks.